and kick this off. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our free Friday coaching call. Uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, a little bit of history on this call before we jump in. I always tell the story of it because stories matter is that um, Rick Jiha, who most of you know that would be on this call today, uh, for years traveled the world speaking and teaching and coaching and sharing his passion for life and business and real estate uh, with so many. And as he would do that, he would, everywhere he went, give out his cell phone number and he would say, if there's anything that you ever need, like anything, um, please call me, uh, business related or not. And so, you know, over the years, I'm like, wow, I'm your relationship coach. And wow, you're a travel guide. And wow, you're a, you know, a this and a that because people would call him. And of course, most of the time it was about the real estate businesses and careers and moving those things forward. However, over the years, because there was one of him, uh, he decided to move that to a one to many approach where he could still help and serve people and do it in a way that uh, would not be limited. And so these calls got started and in his legacy and honor, we're continuing them as a commitment to continue to provide and add a larger conversation and value to people who want to continue to grow their mindset, improve their lives, their quality of lives, the impact that they're making, and of course, grow and succeed to the next levels in their businesses. And so as we move forward um, on these, they'll always be recorded and housed on our Empire Builders Pro YouTube channel, uh, which you can find through our website easily. And if you want to go back and reference them, they'll be there for you. A lot of people catch these on recordings. And so for those of you that are listening live to the recordings, we want to welcome you as well. And as we jump into today, uh, I am really, really excited about today because I will never forget the day that I met the person that we're going to hear from. And, um, you know, Rick was one of the things I love about Rick is that he always found a way to say yes. And, um, he found it a way to say yes to the things that were important. And he had an opportunity that was presented to him to be part of something new when it was launching in an industry that he loved. And so he said, you know, I think we should go check it out. I want you to come with me. Uh, he's like, I'm, I, you know, I've talked to this guy multiple times. He's fantastic. He has, you know, a huge vision. He's got so much knowledge about the industry and people his specialty is systems. I just know what he's going to build and do and create is going to be massive. And I think it'd be really fun to be a part of. And so that landed us in Salt Lake City uh, in an office, an entry to an office in an office building park. And we were, you know, in a handful uh, with a handful of individually selected people in the beginning days of a conversation that has ended up literally impacting thousands of people uh, in the real estate industry and beyond from the coaches that have aligned with Workman's Success Systems because they want to be part of the premier coaching company that helps people not just build great businesses, but incredible lives, ones that are worth living, and for all the clients associated with that too. So the man behind that vision is the person that we're going to have on today. And <clears throat> for all, I mean... I want to welcome you to the call and first off, just talk about um, talk about how you go from hot tubs to real estate. I mean, most people wouldn't know that about you, but it's got a great part of your background and who you are uh, and the value that you bring. I know it's, that's a random place to start, right? It's a random place to start, but it's great. <laughs> thank, thank you for having me. And I remember that meeting uh, with uh, you and Rick and just about there are four of us, four others in the room as we were talking about our vision for workman success systems, and it's turned into over a hundred coaches now and literally uh, thousands and thousands of people that come through our channels where we help them, you know, think about how to, how to really scale their businesses and, and have a good life in the process. And what attracted me to Rick and to you both were that you were passionate about your families. And that was, that was something that mattered and also doing the right thing in the industry, making sure that we don't screw people up, that if we're going to take their money and we're going to, we're going to honor that investment that they have, we better do the right thing. And doing the right thing was uh, not just, uh, not just uh, something you put on your wall as a core value, but it had to be central to who we are as individuals. And Rick was very, very fast, not only attracted to it, but he helped us kind of shape the vision 
And he was our best, he was our best recruiter of coaches. So uh, he went out there into the world as we needed to grow and we were expanding fast and helping attract some of the uh, great coaches that are in your organization today. People like, like Selena and Tracy McNeely, and there's others that are just phenomenal workman coaches that have come through the channels and through those relationships. So I honor that. And uh, so it's a fun part of our history. So going back to satellite dishes and hot tubs, so when I, in my early 20s, I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm just, I'm psychologically unemployable. You have to know that about me. And I uh, had retail stores for about eight years. And about the same time they came out with the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Somebody was moving my cheese. And those big 10 foot satellite dishes that everybody would have these big saucers in their backyard, a company came out with an 18 inch dish and our profit margin went from $1,000 in profit to $68 paid over 12 months on the programming of these little dishes. And it was physically impossible for us to make the difference up. So during my going on a business sale, I literally like the sign said, final days, a guy walks into my store and he says, Verl, I want to, um, he says, I'm looking to, I'm looking for a, a home theaters for all my married kids. And I'm like, well, okay, come on in. What's your budget? And he says, well, I mean, you know, I don't want to spend more than 10 grand each. I'm thinking, well, that's, I mean, that's not a lot for a home theater. You could, you could spend 50,000. And as we got talking to him, I'm like, well, so then how many kids do you have? And he says, 12. Well, now all of a sudden it's a big number. But he says, but only seven of them are married. So I just want to get each of the seven of them a $10,000 home theater. And so my I got sewing machine leg. I don't know if you've ever been in, like, you need to make a sale so bad. I mean, I'm going out of business. I'm closing my stores. I'm moving out of my big house into a little house with a carport with my wife and my three little kids. And I remember sewing machine leg as I'm sitting there on the back of my going out of business flyer. And I'm drawing a picture of what his home theater was going to look like and how you'd feel the helicopter landing in the living room from uh, Terminator 2, because that's what we played on Laserdisc back then. And I uh, ended up I ended up selling him seven ten thousand dollar home theaters, and later they bought hot tubs and everything from me. But on the back of a going out of business flyer, and his name was Mike Holmes from Holmes Homes. And after closing my stores, he started calling me, and his sons started calling me, saying, "Hey, you know, my dad really thinks you should sell real estate for us." I'm like, "Nah, I don't want to be a realtor. I don't have big hair or a big car. I don't even know how to do it." And uh, he ended up calling me up one day and saying, "Meet me at my meet me at my house." And I went up to his home and it was on a Sunday afternoon. And Casey, I don't know if I've told you this part of the story, but um, he said, Verl, how's your family? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, I just, he's like, you're, you're heavy on my heart. And I, I want to know how you're doing. And I had closed everything. We moved into our little place with my three little kids and I, we weren't doing very well. I didn't know how I was going to pay rent. And I, I, we had one, we're down to one car and we were just trying to figure out how to make it. And he says, I'd like to help you out. And he wrote me a check for $10,000. And he says, I don't know if you're ever going to be able to pay me back, but I hope that someday you'll pay it forward if you don't. And I remember like getting in my car and calling my wife and saying, I, I, this guy just gave us a big check. And I like literally was emotional. And, and I'm like, he didn't ask for anything, didn't want anything. And I was like <laughs> blown away by this. Uh, two weeks later, his son calls me and he says, hey, uh, Verl, this is Patrick. Would you come meet with my dad in the office? I'm like, absolutely. It worked out really good last time. <laughs> I'm like, what, how much are you going to give you this time? And so I went there and he said, what would it take to get you to come sell houses for me? He says, I've never met anybody that with integrity sold me something on the back of a flyer and allowed and made me feel comfortable writing him a check for $35,000, knowing he was going out of business. And then you doing the right thing after you close your stores and installing everything and making it all work. And he says, I think you do well in real estate. And I said, man, I, I don't know. He says, I, I think I, you'd have to help me get my real estate license. And I need to make about five grand a month as a base. And he's like, okay, done. So he literally paid for my real estate school, gave me a $5,000 a month base salary while I was in school. And then I went to work for him selling new homes. And that's how I got into real estate. So I, I don't know if you knew that part of the story, but that's, that's uh, the, uh, I was taken care of by a good man. And then I came in and with it, I think I thought I sold like 37 houses my first quarter. And within six months, I was, I developed a program called the critical path to hundred new home sales. And we were chilling it. We absolutely just dominated. And so that's how I got into real estate. I love that. Well, there's one of the <laughs> things that you were, as you were telling that story, no, I hadn't heard the totality of it um, from that specific client, but I love that he was rewarding uh, commitment and relationships. Only seven of the 10 got the home theater system. <laughs> I 
or to the job, got to help the inner system. And then uh, the other piece about that is we always uh, hear, I have heard so many different places that money is a magnifier and it will make you more of who you already are. So if you were a jerk before you have it, it's just going to be a magnifier and you'll be more of a jerk. And uh, if you're somebody who's got a good heart and you're kind and generous, uh, you'll have more that you can do and give and make an impact with, and, and that will be magnified. And so it sounds like you ran across the guy that uh, that definitely was succeeding at a high level, and it magnified who he was. And he saw something in you that was worth investing in, right? Obviously, that was going to change your life, and it did. And it, it not only changed your life, it changed the trajectory of the direction that your life went. It handled immediate needs and you taking care of your family. But the way that you're geared and who you are is obviously to serve and to help others uh, and as a magnifier for you. And that's that's clear based on the thousands of clients now that have come through the doors of Workman Success Systems and those close to 100 coaches that have chosen to align behind and with you and your family uh, and your vision. And so, I, you know, going from being the guy selling 37 homes in your first quarter and lighting the world on fire to transitioning into that next phase. The reason why I think it's important for everybody on the call to really understand that is because there's a lot of people that go out and build companies and products and programs based on an idea without any real world, real world experience of what it feels like to be the guy that works from the bottom up in every aspect of the industry to really know and understand it, understand what drives people. And you talk so much about, you know, a formula for success and it being predictable. So What's, what was the next, you know, piece of that? You go, obviously, with your hair on fire into the sales side of being an actual real estate agent, but would love to hear the progression of what led you to ultimately beginning Workman Success Systems. So, you know, I never really saw myself as a realtor. I, I always saw myself as an entrepreneur, and real estate was the vehicle that I was using to um, feed my family. Like, it's like, I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't love houses. I don't love driving people around, showing them houses. It wasn't about the real estate industry that I was passionate about. It was about how do I take care of my little family and actually do the right things as a father and a husband. And I had seen uh, when I was in high school, Casey, I saw, I won a happening book sales contest and at Brighton high school. And I got a ticket to go to the University of Utah. And I saw Zig Ziglar and Dr. Schuler and Tom Hopkins in one of those motivational success rallies. And it was me and all these Amway people and a bunch of realtors. And here's Burl from Brighton High School, DECA Club. And um, I got I got done. I was so fired. When Zig Ziglar spoke, I had felt emotion that I'd never felt before. He was like, and you got to prime the pump and you got to have a goal and you got to break it down to a monthly, weekly, daily basis. And only then can you be a meaningful specific. And I went back to my DECA teacher and I'm like, I want to be a motivational speaker. And my DECA teacher is like, you know, son, you need to have more realistic goals. There's not really a career path for that. Like legit, like who crushes the dreams of a child? <laughs> so, so I'm in. They're real out there. <laughs> I, I know, right? So what's funny is, is I, I end up, uh, I get into real estate, and the guy that owned the computer store next to my satellite dish store came to me one day in the model home and said, "Hey, I want to, I want to come up with a new company where we're going to sell laptops to realtors, and we're going to do it by doing events and doing these seminars." And I'm like. <laughs> I'm in. What do we have to do? I had no training. I didn't know how to do it. I had sold a satellite dish to a guy named Henry Marsh, who was a four-time Olympian that lived in Bountiful, Utah. And we had sold him a satellite and a hot tub and all this stuff for his house. And he was a, a speaker for Franklin Covey. And as an Olympian, he taught stress management and all these things. And I called Henry and said, Henry, I'm going to do a seminar. Will you kind of mentor me and teach me how to speak? And so I go up to Henry's house and Henry sits down with me. He says, you've got to do these three things. You have to entertain, you have to enlighten, and you have to empower. Those are your three. This is my speaker training, Casey. So like entertain, enlighten, empower. It's got to be enter entertaining and interesting. You got to give them new information. And then you got to give them a roadmap or empowerment in, able to, in order to be able to do whatever it is you're talking about. So we started doing these little seminars. We call we do these 50 people half day seminars where uh, realtors would come to a room. We'd have 10 laptops and they all get to play on a laptop. So I used to start the seminar by with how many of you have a computer? 
who's thinking about getting one? And do you want a laptop or a desktop? That was how we started. So that's how I got going. <laughs> and <laughs> we ended up building a cool little company. It was called Automation Quest. And in 1999, I sold that to homes.com. And so we became the largest technology training company in real estate and doing these seminars on, on technology. And then homes.com, uh, we got a big, uh, They this was like their early days. They didn't even have a business. All they had was a dot-com. And they went out, We after they bought us, we went out and raised about $70 million on Wall Street. And my job as a speaker was to sell 100,000 agent websites in 12 months. And I took my um, critical path to 100 new home sales, and I turned it into the critical path for a 100,000 agent websites. And we applied all of the principles and systems that we used to create, go from here to here and actually hit 100,000 agent websites in 12 months. And so that's really what put me on the map as a speaker. And um, so Casey, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you've delivered something amazing. And I've heard you speak and like you're done. And I just am there having all this introspection and thinking about my life and where I want to be and go after I hear you. And people would hear us speak and then they'd see us a year later and they go, that was the greatest talk I've ever heard. And I'm like, well, what have you done with it? And nothing. And I just decided that um, I didn't want to be just a talking head. I wanted to, I wanted to inspire people to make changes in their life. And then I wanted to help them. And that's when we started doing coaching is I learned that with, with speaking or training, you learn something new, but when we add a, a coaching component, you actually do something new. And so it's, how do you take that inspiration or the motivation that happens in an event and turn it into action? And that's what, that's what kind of got us in the coaching business is that I love the, I love the rush that happens when you have an audience that is listening and engaged and having fun, and then you can turn them into now what? And now I'm going to give you a roadmap on the next, and it's going to take us two years, but we're going to transform your life. And we'll take you from 250000 to a million dollars in income, and we'll do it without screwing up your family, your faith, your friends, your fun, or your fitness. And in most cases, we actually give greater balance in the areas that matter most. And finances is just one of the measuring sticks, but... Um, our, our passion is how do you create leverage in your life so you can do what God put you on this earth to do, whatever that is. And everybody has a different meaning or purpose. I love that. You know, one of the things I think is such a critical component of that is that everyone that's on this call has picked an industry that's about being the entrepreneur. And I talk often about the fact that people become entrepreneurs well, because they recognize they're psychologically employable, unemployable, which is a very, uh, very important piece, but that they get into entrepreneurship a lot of the time because they want to have it all. All of those things that you mentioned, fun, faith, family, fitness, finances, all of those things on their terms. And I call that freedom. Uh, you know, the ability to be where you want to be when you want to be with the people that you want to be with as much or as little as you want without regard to constraints around time or money. And so how do you build you know, a business and a life really by design where the majority of people don't actually experience or live that kind of life ever. And yet anyone can, if they're willing to learn those steps. And then of course, the biggest piece that you talked about is the integration and the implementation, which where having someone that walks side by side with you in that journey, every step of the way in this context that we're talking about today, obviously what you've done with your, your coaching organization and the lives that are being impacted by that. So I know that, um, you know, our topic today, which people that got, that saw the promotion is like team mastery. And like, we haven't even gotten to the topic yet, but I think it's really important in everything is about the foundation, right? And when you have a solid foundation, what you build on top of that foundation is going to be enduring and the absence of foundation, uh, you know, you're just putting up stuff, constantly building new stuff, hoping that something's going to stick, kind of like throwing eggs against the wall and, and watching them just kind of dribble down and going, wow, well, I hope, you know, some great idea or something's going to happen and work. But what you've done and, and what I love, uh, you know, what I love about it is. Well, first off, you have like the greatest name ever, Work Men, right? So right out, right out of the gate, like, you know, you got to work to make it happen. And then obviously Workmen Success Systems, right? So there is a big component between having systems in place, which you have talked about through every stage of your growth and development as an entrepreneur that's going to lead to that kind of success. Today, we're, you know, I know that Workmen Success Systems has evolved over the years. And that 
now there's just so, so much of a robust suite of value to be added to people that want to build a team, have a team, grow a team and an organization. And, um, and I'm sure you more than anyone and your coaches at Workman Success System see somebody that has that, that desire to do that. And then they don't have the formula that's actually going to create something that's a long-term sustainable business to go on the back end of that. And there may be agents that are on this call today that, you know, are like, well, having a team sounds kind of sexy and maybe that's something I want to do and build. And but, you know, do we do it because it sounds good or is there a reason behind it? What's the time you do it? When would you say that you don't do it? And and what do you need to get in place to do that? So I'd love to just start that piece of the conversation. And of course, anybody that's listening in today, um, feel free to pop any questions in the in the chat box because we'll take those as we're going through through our dialogue. Okay, I know so that was great. like 15 questions rolled into it. one, but you can handle it. I can handle it. And and by the way, you know, it's funny when I hear you say family, faith, friends, fun, fitness, and it turns into freedom. I love that. I've never added that. But what happens is, is oftentimes what people do is they trade finances for one of the other five. And so in focusing on finances, they do it at the expense of their family or their faith or their fun or their fit. And I use fitness and food interchangeably. And so, you know, fitness or food, whatever, if you, if, like you can do either. <laughs> you got to build muscles, right? Yeah, You're not going to get freedom. any food gonna... unless you got some fitness to give it to your mouth. I'm going to add, I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add freedom to my F's because I think that's a really, that's a brilliant way of doing it. When you have balance, it creates freedom. So I'm going to say that um, nobody should tell anybody what kind of business they should have. Let's start with that. It's that, it's that the business that we create as entrepreneurs should be designed around the lifestyle that we want. And so what I say is, is that when you take and you were, if you were to draw a picture of what you want your life to look like five years from now, um, I want to be financially secure. I want to have a hundred thousand dollars a month of uh, annuity income coming in. I want to be able to have investment properties. I want to be able to travel two months out of the year. I want to be able to go to my kids, um, or my grandkids, ball games and practices. When you design your life, and then we say, okay, this is what I want my life to look like. Then I go back to the businesses and say, what has to be happening in your business to be able to live that lifestyle? Most people do it backwards. They create a business that becomes their lifestyle. And everything they do in every area of their business, their life, revolves around business. If all your friends are realtors and your only friends are in the business, then it's a shallow life because there's amazing people out there in this world, in every industry, in every walk of life, in every country. And the more that I meet people from around the world, the more I realize how small of a, a group we live in and that there's so much more to learn and operate. So for me, I wanted to have, uh, here's some of the things that mattered to me in my business is I wanted to make decisions with my wife. We have six children and 10 grandkids. I want to make decisions because it's the right thing to do or not the right thing to do, not because we do or don't have the money. I wanted to eliminate not having enough money in the decision making process for our children. If you have a children with special needs or if you have someone that needs additional help or you want to send them on a mission trip or uh, to do something or go to an expensive college, I want to do the right thing and not have to say, well, we can or can't because we don't have the money. So that was a big thing for me. And I grew up in poverty. And so I didn't ever want my kids to experience what I did with poverty. So I went ahead and, 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 and designed this life with my wife. And we said, what do we want? And then we create the business that supports it. Now, so I say, number one is, what do you want your life to look like? So once you define that, then we can look at your, look at who you are. And, and then the other thing is be present. I wanted to be present. Um, how many of you have seen or had um, kids that you wish would come in the business, but they have no interest in it? And, and, and Selena, I love that you raise your hand on that, but do you think it's possible they have no interest in the business because they saw it overtake your entire life and that when you were with them, you were always on your phone or that when they're trying to talk to you, you're texting or responding, or it's really important. I got a buyer or a seller or whatever, because the, the life that we lived, they perceived that the business was our life and was more important to, to us than them. And so they don't want to come in the business. I didn't want to be that dad. I remember getting in my car, Casey. Uh, this was the day Brienne had her first baby. Uh, maybe it was her second child. And it was her second one. And I had taken Brienne to the hospital. She says, can you go pick the other kids up from school? And 
Um, I went to the elementary school and I pulled up alongside the curb and I see my little granddaughter coming with her two friends in the carpool. And right as she came to the door, my phone rang. And I answered it. And this little sweet angel sat in the back seat of my car and says, Grandpa. And I said, and I go, hi, this is Verl. And I watched this joy drain out of her face in my rear view mirror. And it broke my heart. And I said, I am never doing that again. That is not the dad or the grandpa that I want to be. And so that's the, when I think about the design of your life, that's what I'm talking about, being present where you are. So um, let me ask everybody a question. How many of you can think of a business that is wildly successful, that runs any industry that operates as a company of one? Put it in the chat, like your doctor's office, the dentist, grocery store, insurance agency. I'm trying to think of how many companies are wildly, massively successful that only have one person in them. I'm not seeing a lot of chats here. Casey, can you think of any? I cannot, but you know what I'm thinking of as you're saying this is uh, one of my favorite people out there, Dr. John Demartini, and he talks about people that are that have businesses. The way that they become more successful is to serve ever and ever greater numbers of people, and it's impossible to do that with one person. Right. So this whole concept of when should I start a team is kind of like, well, when do you want to be successful? Because when you're good at the business and you're all good at the business, what happens is you attract more opportunity and you get to a place where you either have to say no to the opportunity or no to the other things that matter more in life. And that's why we do teams, because in order for you to have it all to serve the clients and to give people the kind of service that they come to expect from you, you either have to create great systems or have great assistance or have additional people that can help them that are trained by you or you do it at the expense of your family, faith, friends, fun, fitness, and freedom. So it's your choice. But like, and then the next thing is, okay, so the, my first question is how many wildly successful companies do it by themselves? It's like none. I can't think of any. And then the second question is this, is when you have anything going on in your in your life that's, that causes you to need medical attention, do you want to go to a generalist or do you want to go to a specialist? What's the question? You want to go to a general? I want the, I want to go who the specialist would go to. Yeah. When my father <laughs> I want the best of the best. <laughs> well, right. So my father-in-law gets cancer, right? And and so he gets pancreatic cancer, which is the worst. And his general practitioner, we thought he had um hepatitis. He started turning yellow, his pancreas wasn't working right. And they went through all these tests and came back and they're like, hey, you know, um all of a sudden it comes up and you have this scan that says you have cancer. It looks like it's in your pancreas. We're going to have to, uh, we're going to, but it's okay. I also do cancer stuff and I can put you on chemo. And the immediate response of the family was, man, I love you. I th we're grateful for the diagnosis, but who's the best doctor in the world at treating pancreatic cancer at the Huntsman Institute at University of Utah. Who is it that's running clinical trials? You know, Steve Jobs had just died from it and Patrick Swayze, the same cancer. And now my father-in-law has it. And so I, I think about that all the time. You're dealing with people's most important financial transaction. And, you know, the realtor's like, it's okay. I do real estate. I do residential, commercial. I work with buyers. I work with sellers. I'm a mortgage lender. Like I do it all. Like, I don't want that generalist. I want someone who is a freaking laser focused expert in dealing with selling houses in my price range or helping buyers that are underserved find homes and off market properties and actually getting into a house. This whole issue we're having with the class action lawsuits, a result of generalists that don't know how to show their value because they don't specialize in anything. And so they're average at everything. Malcolm Gladwell says you got to do something 10,000 times to be great at. The average, average realtor sells seven houses a year. They can't get good at it. So no one's good at it. So whatever you're getting paid is too much. Like the, the consumer gets it anyway. So, so for me, I love this concept of team because it allows me to create specialists in every area of the business. You want to find a house? I'll give you a buyer specialist. They show more houses. They understand how to sell their value. They know what's on the market. We train them to be excellent.
excellent buyer's agents. You want you want to list your home? I'm going to give you someone that wakes up every single day at each drinks and sleeps listings. They they focus on everything they have to do to prospect, list houses, and negotiate contracts, and they're just better at it because they do it 60 or 70 or 80 times a year instead of the generalist who does it seven times. And then when your house goes under contract, my goodness, I don't want the realtor managing my paperwork. Look, you all suck at it anyway. So why do you focus on it? Let somebody else who loves that be a transaction specialist. When I look at your SWOT analysis and I see your strengths and weaknesses, weaknesses is always attention to detail, the paperwork, the, you know, the accounting stuff. It's the things that we're not naturally good at. Instead of trying to be good at it and be a generalist, the reason, the reason it causes you so much strength and anxiety to work on it is because it's out of your it's out of your behavioral strength profile. So give it to somebody else who loves the, the checklists and the processes and making sure that the transaction goes smooth from contract to close. The consumer today is being trained to work with specialists. And we have this really cool opportunity as we build our real estate teams to build a team of specialists where everybody, where the consumer has a higher level of experience and is willing to pay for that. I mean, how many you pay more to go? Like, I remember when the dentist says to me, hey, you've got to get a, you got to, I got to pull your teeth out because, you know, you've got whatever we got to, you've got to, I don't know what, what, what causes your teeth that to be pulled? Root canals, right? Too much I mean, candy, Viral. Too much too candy. Too much candy, too much soda. <laughs> so I got to get it. They got to pull my teeth out, put a post in it, put a fake tooth in there. And I'm like, he goes, but that's okay. I also do that. I'm like, no, man, I want someone who only does that. And I want to be asleep while they do it. So I go to the endodontist to get that done. I don't let my general dentist do it. So think about that whole concept in life and how the consumer is trained today to work with specialists. I love what, um, and the other thing is, I'll tell you that, um, you know, being with EXP and the company that you've all chosen to put your license with, I think that there's all this incredible opportunity of attraction and that you focus so much on being attractive. Well, there is no greater attraction than success. You want to attract people, put more signs in yards, build your team so it's creating lots of revenue. And then you can focus on building your organization that's your long-term strategy for creating, for creating generational wealth. But if you don't have revenue to pay your bills while you're building your organization, you go out of business and quietly go away into the night. Like the whole organization does better when people sell houses. And when we get really good at selling houses because we specialize, it allows us to replace ourselves in all the areas of the transactional specialties that don't require our attention. You don't have to be a buyer's agent. You don't have to be a transaction coordinator. And eventually, you don't even have to be the listing partner. And so what you do is you create great systems. And this is what we do is we help you create all these systems for everything. So eventually you can focus on the area of the business you love the most. I don't know. Am so I let's going? Talk about, <laughs> yeah, no. So let's talk about the elephant in the room because I know we've got people of all different levels of experience in business that are here. So for the person that's the average realtor right now, that's seven deals a year, the elephant in the room is um, I'm only doing seven deals a year or maybe less than that right? As the market changes and we're in a different market. So I'm going to take my five to seven deals a year that I'm doing, and I'm going to, I'm going to pay a transaction coordinator. And, uh, you know, I'm going to like hire specialists to do the things that I'm not specializing in, but then that means where am I going to live while I do that? So what is that? Um, and then if we're going to, you know, layer that onto the next thing, now I'm going to, now I'm going to think of hiring a coach and a lot of people freeze at this part of the conversation because, uh, you know, the first thing they're thinking about is the first thing you were thinking about when you got into real estate, which is I got to feed my family. Yep. Like you say, my boat runs on gas, not on thanks. Like if you don't have money coming in, we have issues, right? So we have to have revenue. Yep. So I'm going to say that we lead with revenue. First of all, if you're only doing seven deals a year, um, can I ask you all, like if you're full time in real estate and you're doing seven deals a year, can I ask you in the nicest possible way, what in the hell are you doing all day? What do you do? Like, there's only three things we do in real estate. The first one is prospect. We look for people who want to buy and sell real estate. The second one is we list and show homes. And then the third one is negotiate contracts. If you're doing seven, if you're, if you're not showing homes or listing homes, you should be prospecting. The reason people do seven deals a year is because they don't know what to do. And it's not that they're bad people. It's just they don't know what to do. And they're being trained by people who are also doing seven deals a year. Like, we got to get you out of that room. And we got to get you in an environment where, like, um, 
it's like it's almost like my my DECA teacher who told me that there is no career path for a motivational speaker, right? And so you should have more realistic goals. Well, the reason I, I was in the wrong room. You need to be in a room where people are believe in you and believe you have value and will are willing to pour into you. I love this organization, Casey. I love that you do a free Friday coaching call because this is leadership pouring into an organization saying, let me help develop you and let's create an environment where you can succeed. That's why you have the training center. You offer all these resources for um, the people in your organization is because you want them to have the, the, the tools, the training and the trade secrets to succeed. So for the someone who, someone who believes that they're stuck where they are, uh, first of all, I want you to change your belief in what's possible. And then and then I'll just give you some coaching advice. Let's figure out and let's make a decision that if you're going to spend time away from family every day, that it needs to be worth it. You know, our country is screwed up and our families are screwed up because uh, we spend time away from them, but we don't get the highest return on our time. And so what is the one thing that you can do every single day that will move the needle from a financial perspective that'll put money in your pocket? And if I can get you to focus on that one thing, like you want me to build a million dollar team for you right now, Casey, I'll do it right now on the fly. Do, do it right now. And um, everybody get your pens and pens and paper or pull okay. over first. Casey, I'm gonna role, I'm gonna role play this with you, okay? Okay, perfect. I'm game. Let's go. All right. So let's just do it. So there's some key numbers. I want everybody to write down these numbers. For every listing you generate, it should generate six to eight leads a month. One listing equals six to eight leads a month. For every listing you get, you should close 1.5 buy side transactions. For every 25 leads we generate, we add a buyer's agent. What does this sound like to you? Sounds like a system. Like a system. All right. Okay. And so Casey. Wait, it, wait, it, I passed. I first my passed my first one. Do I get to stay in the game for round two? You're in the game. You don't have an option. You're okay, in, I'm in the game. In I'm in. Game. Oh, I'm in all the way to the end. Okay, perfect. That's All good. Right. I like the deep end of the pool. Okay, so and so we got to figure out what the one thing that will give you the highest return on your time is. When you work with a buyer, how many hours do you spend with that buyer? Generally. I would say six to eight. Yeah. No, try 60 to 80. Now, wow, you're, 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 uh, you're D -like. I just drove off the road. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to see, like, when I worked with buyers, Merle, it was this, uh, we're going to sit down for an hour and you find out exactly what you want. And then I'm going to go put it in front of you and we're going to decide which one we're going to write on because I, six to eight hours, I would have killed myself with the buyer. 60 to 80 hours, I would have killed myself with the buyer. Well, so here's yeah. what happens is because you have nothing else to do. You're happy to drive them around, look or looky loo. You'll take one of them and not both. You don't have buyer agreement signed. We take people out that aren't qualified. When you have five deals a year, you over invest in them because you wanted them to use you instead of being methodical about it. So let's just say it's 20 hours. You spend 20 hours with a buyer. When you list a property, how much time does it take you to list a house? Well, that depends on how much you're going to talk to. I don't know. From the listing to the to the done. Yep. Well, I would say that it's just to get a listing. To sit in front of someone and take yep. a listing. Yep. An, An hour, hour, two hours, maybe two hours. So, what's a higher return on your time? A buyer at twenty hours or a listing at two? Listing at two. Okay. So we've just established now the highest use of your time is to focus on listings because you get a higher return on your time away from family. All right. So. Um, but Verl, there are no listings. No, it's not true. It's just you don't have any. <laughs> so, Thank you. Thank you. There's not a listing shortage. People buy and sell houses every single day, thousands of them all over the country. And I can go pull up reports on that. But you want to know how many houses sell? Pull up your MLS and do a search. If you don't, if 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 you think there's a listing issue, it's because you have the listing issue, not because the the market's not buying and selling. People move, and it has nothing to do with inflation or interest rates. They move because of the life events that cause them to move. They get married, divorced, a death, a birth. They have, uh, they transfer, they gain a job, they lose a job. They want to move their kids into places where they can play more competitive sports. It's all of the life events that occur that cause people to move. We're a tool in the process. So right, we, don't have a, we don't have a listing problem. We have a prospecting problem. And so Casey, I'm, we're going to build a million dollar business. I told you, I'm going to show you how to build, build a million dollar team right now. And we're going to figure out what the one most important thing that you focus on is. And so we've already determined that listings give you the highest return on time. You with me? Yes. So if all you had to do every day was to focus on 
prospecting and setting listing appointments and going on those appointments and everything else we could take off your plate, like, would it be reasonable to say you could get two listing appointments a week? I don't think so. Well, you don't even have to list two houses. You just have to get two appointments a week. I don't even care if they list. You go on two listing appointments a week. Is there anybody on here that like believes they could get two listing appointments a week if that's all they focused on? Hey, what if I told you this, Casey? What if I told you that at the end of the year, if you get two listing appointments a week, I'm going to pay you a million dollars. But if you get less than two a week, you're going to get zero. How would you work? I would be all in. I would be all in. Would you, is there any chance you go home and tell your family we did zero? That's how you have to work. That is the mindset and the attitude of a champion is you work like your life depends on it. Like failure is not an option. And so, and, and then we figure out the one thing that matters. So two listing appointments a week means you're going to go on a hundred listing appointments this year. If you're not very good at it, you kind of suck. You're going to get 50%. That's 50 listings. What's the average number of what's what's the average amount of income you make on a listing in your market and you know i mean what's for 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 uh for your team what's the average amount of commission you make when you list a house Ten thousand. Ten thousand. so you're selling crack houses i'm just smiling <laughs> after team team splits are you talking about team lead that's doing gross just commission. focusing on listing? gross commission oh gross commission is closer to 20. All right. So $20,000. Wow. And if we just went on two listing appointments a month or a week, we, we went on a hundred a year. We did 50 of them, 50 times two, two times five. How much is that? 20,000 times a hundred is how much? Go ahead and say it. Two million, 200,000. Two million. Add another zero. Million. <laughs> yeah. It's $2 million in gross cold as income. Well, let's just say I'm smoking crack and only half of that's true. It's a million dollars. That's that's all we did is we figured out that if you just focus on two appointments a week and you get up every day intensely obsessed with the single thing that is going to generate two listing appointments. The way that we the way that we schedule a win Scott at the end of the week. Like you don't get to get your hair cut, just kidding. Or you don't get to go, you don't get a mani pedi, you don't get to get your beer manicured, you don't no date night. Like you don't get you don't get to celebrate at the end of the week unless you hit your two listings, uh, two listing appointments, and we celebrate our wins every single week by focus on that one thing, you win. Even if we're not good at it, you don't you're, you're gonna get good at it if you start doing it twice a week. Now, for every listing we generate, if we did 50 listings, that means we're gonna do 65 buy side transactions. So we just took your number and we doubled it. And so now your number is now doubled and you're not allowed to put a buyer in your car. You put a buyer in your car, I'm going to lose my mind. And so one of the cool parts of, of EXP is we have this attraction model. I want buyer's agents. They can be in your organization or on your team. We have a very specific amount we pay buyer's agents. We pay buyer's agents a 40% split. They get 40, 60 on the first two deals they do in a month, 45, 55 on deals three and four, and then 50, 50 on five plus. And then it resets every month. And the reason we follow that formula. So hold on, hold on. 50, 50 after the fifth deal each month. Correct. Okay, just checking. Right. Now, when you think about that, I like we don't even want you as a buyer's agent on a workman coach team unless you're doing 24 deals a year. So are you going to make more money getting 100% of seven deals or 50% of 24? So I would ask you, and, and Nancy's going, I'm not sure that works. Well, guess what, Nancy? What's more important to you, the split you're on or the amount of money you take home to your family? Because I'm all about big 1099s. You go home and tell your family, I got a 95% split, but I didn't sell any houses. Can we eat that? No, I want you on a 45% split average, and I want you selling 36 houses a year and freaking making 100 grand. If you're not making 100 grand, I don't want you on my team. Because if you're not making enough money to pay your bills and live and be a homeowner, then we're failing you as leaders. And so I, if you're in real estate and you're not making 100 grand, let's fix how you're doing real estate because you're not doing it right. You can't make $100,000 doing real estate. You're not doing it right. And we can fix it. And a lot of people sabotage their own success because they have limiting beliefs in what's possible. You can do anything. Okay, so um, 
like whatever you believe religiously, I believe that we're all sons and daughters of God and God didn't make mistakes. And that means we all have unlimited potential. And if you really have, if you really believe that, then why do you have these beliefs that say I'm okay making 60 grand? Like change, change it, like change your belief. You hang out with people. You're in the wrong, hang out with people like Casey who believe and like Selena. And I'm looking at Tracy McNeely on this call. These are all like, these are all powerful entrepreneurs that understand how to help people see and, and do things differently and believe in something bigger. And when you believe in something bigger, you change your behaviors. So now I'm doing this listing thing and I'm focused on the two listings. What happens when you do your two listings and you focus on that? The reason people don't hit these big numbers is because they, they, they have and they create excuses for failure. Um, I had to work with a buyer. Well, guess what? Stop working with buyers. Focus on your listings. You want to put a buyer in your car? Get me your two appointments this week. You get me two listing appointments, I'll let you work with a buyer. You don't get your two listing appointments, you give the buyer to somebody else. Focus on dollar productive activities, the highest return on time. And everything in your life will change. And so people want, so the real, the real question next is, well, how do I get listings? Like, where do I get my two appointments a week? Like that, like that's what everybody should be asking me how, like, it's good. It's okay to say, do it, but then how, right? How? Oh, hey, great question. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I, I just wanted you to know I'm still in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how is really everything, right? Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple things. Number one is we use a program called the top, top, or top 50. It's, it's how to close 86 deals a year, working with 50 people, one hour a day. And it's an ebook I wrote called 8651. I'll give it to everybody. If you guys all want it, I'll just give it to you. It's a whole system on working with the 50 people in your life that are most likely to give you one referral a year. And it's a very specific process on what to say and how to talk to them and then how to create a referral network that is just com completely just running. Selena is the top 50 work. Of all, like all the people we coach and all the things you see, what is the highest lead conversion system we have? Top lead source in the country. Right. And how much does it cost? Zero. Right. So is it okay if I give you free lead generation? So I'm going to give you the top 50. And then the other thing is, uh, let's see, I think... Uh, what else can I give you? I think, um, so the top 50 is number one. Um the next thing is you all have access to this, and, but I don't know if you're engaged in it, but inside your, uh, what, what do you call the training center, Casey? So through Empire Builders Pro mm -hmm. that everyone is a part of in our organization, there's mastery coaching. And within mastery coaching is the training center that has all this stuff that you're talking about. Yep. And because of, yes, that, that's where people we find have that. buyer agent training, listing agent training, and in the in the in the SLAM program, it's called SLAM. That is a listing agent mastery training system that was designed by people who list over 200 houses a year. It's what to do before, during, and after, how to attract and find listings, and then what to do when you go on the appointments, how to set them up. That's and you you all have access to that case. You can tell them how they get access to the Empire Builders to that training, but it's like it's 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 uh um it's silly that it's available and most people don't plug into it. So I'm gonna encourage you to go through SLAM, go through Listing Agent Mastery, and you because that's what we use when we train and we're coaching someone, we make them go through that program and then we actually say, show me what you've done. We talk about four pillars of income for, for listings. We talk about building action plans for all of those things. Um, the next thing we do is like, how do you how do you build and, and create a high performing team? Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple of things. We, we, I'm, I'm big on team building activities. We create a really cool new, new thing. And I don't usually give this away, Casey, but when you ask me to do this on team building and really how to get your teams to come together, uh, we created a thing called 20 unique team building activities for real estate rock tars and teams. I'm going to give, I'll give all that to everybody too. And so somewhere I'm going to have, Candace, will you pl plug a link into the chat? And if you just click on that, you tell me who you are. And then if like, if somebody wants some help, like you really want a coach or someone that can help you really build this, then just raise your hand we'll, and say, I want some help. And we'll talk to you about what that looks like. And so um, fill out the form or whatever. And somebody from my team will reach out to you. So uh, you can have it. I, I love, you know, when I watch people, one of my favorite things is today we did a coach training call. And so all my coaches are on a call every Friday. And everything we build, everything we do is based on the wisdom of our crowd. Uh, one thing you have to know, Casey, is I'm not that smart. I'm a, 
I'm a, I've done 18 months at the community college. I never finished or graduated from college. I was told I wasn't smart enough. I was in resource in high school. I was in the special class in the short bus and um, was told that I really, I really shouldn't go to college because it wasn't going to be, it was going to be too hard for me that I wouldn't really amount to much. And, and that was by my mother. And um, so I'm not that smart, but here's what I have learned. I've learned a couple life lessons. Number one is that if you surround yourself with the right people, it elevates your, your belief in what's possible. And the other thing is, is I've learned that if I can find people who are better than me at something and I follow them and I emulate what they do and I copy it, then I'm likely to get a similar result, if not the same. And so we use that concept to build workman success systems. It's built on the wisdom of our crowd. It's these high-performing rock star real estate agents and team leaders that all contribute to all of the content and the coaching and the systems that we use. It's not based on what Burl did back in the day. It's based on what are these amazing people doing today in this crazy market to have success. You know, it's fun. Now, on the, there were a couple of calls. That we talk about wins and successes. On the coach training call this morning, one client said I was going through and we were looking at the numbers of my client and they realized they, they have as much pending this year right now in February as they closed the entire year last year in 2023. Who wants that problem? You see, at every level of growth in your business, we have to break all your systems and then we have to build for the next level of growth. And, and that's what most people don't understand. That's why a coach is so valuable is a coach has the ability to look at your business and life from a different perspective and anticipate the challenges you're going to have and then put the right infrastructure in place so that when the business happens, you're able to scale with it and not have the wheels come off while you're changing it. And Casey, you've seen that in um, networking. You've seen it in real estate growth. You've seen it in team building. So those are, these are all, I'm giving you all these Verl nuggets. So hope you don't mind me just kind of spewing. I get this kind of, this kind of a free, free for all talk track. No, I love it. I love it. So I think in, in encapsulated in everything that you've said is a non-negotiable. And that is when you have skin in the game called money in the game, you play the game differently. Right. And a lot of people think about coaching in the perspective of, oh, well, I, when I can afford to get a coach, then I'll, I, then I will get a coach. When I'm doing enough business to work that into, you know, my lead with revenue plan, then I'll get a coach. And I would say that the opposite is true, because at the end of the day, like what I know about people is that we will consistently perform to minimums. What's the minimum amount I need to make to make my house payment and pay my medical insurance and make sure that I've got food on the table. And when, um, when someone's in a conversation about performing to minimums, then they're in that conversation of, well, when I grow my business and get it to this point, then I'm going to hire a coach to get, take it to the next level versus the mindset of what we talked about and you talked about, which is faith, fun, family, fitness, finances, freedom, Right. How do you food? Yep. Freedom food. If you like, if you really want to create a life and business by design, you're not waiting to make the money to make the investment to go hire the coach and then do what the coach with the proven track record of success and those systems is going to do. You make the investment and you go, oh, this is a non-negotiable. I'm investing in me and I know that where I put my money, my attention will follow. We're on a free Friday coaching call, which means Everybody can get off this call and do nothing and they haven't lost anything other than the hour of their life. But if there's a financial investment, people follow where their mo where money goes, energy flows, right? So if, I mean, when I think about like all of the things that I hear about, oh, will you coach me on this? Will you help me on this? Well, yes, but you're not going to get near the value as if you're writing that check every month as, and, and it's as a, play, a way to hold yourself accountable to do the things, then be coachable, right? Because the greatest coach in the world and the greatest systems in the world are useless if you don't have somebody that's coachable and going to integrate them. And having skin in the game, money going out every month to do that is the is the greatest way possible for somebody that says they want to grow their business or wants to do more business to actually put a, put a buffer, I call them bumpers on the bowling alley, right? Oh, you want to stay in the lane? Great. Here's how you stay in the lane. You've got to build the design so that you're in the lane. And that's where coaching is so, you know, incredible and making that investment, not a when I get to a certain point in my business, uh, because that's where I'm going in my business. And I couldn't think of a better 
of a better resource and a better community and people that know how to do that and do that at a high level. Um, and, and for those of you that might have missed that, uh, and one of the things that I value about Workman's Success System is that wisdom of the crowd and the people that are coaching with Workman's Success Systems are people that have, you know, come off of selling hundreds of homes a year. They're the top producers in their market. They're not talking about concepts and ideas that they haven't used to create results. And that wisdom of the crowd has built the curriculum at the highest level possible from all companies in the industry. Uh, because you guys pretty much have, you know, a pool of everyone that wants to succeed at a high level that's drawn to your community and have an incredible life while doing it. So um, we have about four minutes left before the top of the hour. And so I would love to uh, open that up to anyone that wants to come off mute with a quick question uh, before we say thank you and goodbye for today. Yeah, let's play Stump the Coach. Ask me something hard. Casey, a lot of people behave today as you're waiting for people to come off mute. Um, our life experiences form our beliefs in what's possible. And the things that we focus on, our actions, are directly related to what we believe is possible. I, you know, I used to believe that making sixty or $70,000 a year was possible because that's what my dad made as a teacher. And so I behaved based on what those beliefs were. And so we have to create new experiences that change what we believe is possible. And, what, and I think what coaching really does for people is it helps them change their perspective and see things from a different perspective. So they have a new experience. And all of a sudden, when you start getting wins because of the accountability that's incorporated in your life, that's when um, that's when your beliefs change. And at every single level, that's how we get past limiting beliefs. We create new experience. Uh, McDwyer says, how do we get around limiting beliefs? We create new experiences. The reason that you go to conferences, the, way, the reason you go to EXPCon is because you have a new experience where you're around people that were like you, that did something different, that are now getting a different result. And you borrow their beliefs until they become yours. But you can't just borrow their beliefs. You have to borrow their beliefs and you have to borrow their, their activities that got them that result. And that's where most people fail is they don't do the activities and they don't measure the right things. I'll say that which gets measured gets done. We track everything. I want to know what you do in 30 minute increments all day, every day. Tom, you had a question. Come on, man. Bring it. Hey, Verl, great to see you. Uh, so many questions, but I want to, since we only got three minutes, I want to make the, the time with you count. In far as listings, I've listed lots of homes in LA and I've only listed a couple here now that I'm in Sacramento and I think it's the belief thing that and coupled with uh, my listing presentation, which needs revamp. So how much of me getting up and running through slam is going to be my listing presentation versus canning the listing presentation and just have a conversation and realizing that I have the belief and the ability to sell this person to home and get them exactly what they need. Uh, no, I think you need an unbelievable listing presentation and you have to set the bar so high that anybody that comes in after you isn't a player. And if you go in there and you wing it because you believe you can do really good, um, that's not viable to the consumer. If you're dealing with, you think about the personality or the behavioral style of the consumer, you have D's, I's, and C's, and your presentation should have elements that appeal to each one of them. So if you have a high analytical and you've got the data on why you're the right person to list and here's what you're going to do for them. No, you. I think you need to have, um, you need to go in and you need to, I want you to do the opening ceremonies to the Olympics. When you go into a listing, you should be so prepared and you should have so much great content and a premium marketing plan there should be a pre-listing package that goes out prior to the listing that that sets you up so that when you get there they already know who you are and your raving fans have told them on video what makes you great so when you get there it's a matter of establishing price and timing so so my opinion is no don't just believe you can do it the whole the whole if you put it out in the universe like the secret the world will give it to you is a bunch of bull crap if you want it you've got to go get it the universe isn't going to deliver it because you believe that it's going to happen. You got to make it happen. You got to be strategic about it and you got to show up. So Tom in slam, we teach you what to do before, during and after the listing. So it's all, there's a lot of it in there. So just go through it. And until you're listing 200 houses a year, my suggestion would be do exactly what I tell you in slam. And then once you get to 200, then I want, then, I'll, then I'm going to listen to your opinion on what, what's better. Otherwise just do it my way. Deal. Deal. Okay. Thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> So, Verl, um, in closing, because we're at the, what's that? I hope I'm okay with being that direct. Hey, listen, I love it. I love it. Here's what I believe, right, is everyone's got a story that they're telling themselves, and the story they're telling themselves is the 
evidence they're creating in their life to be right about that story. And so if you, you know, your story is, the, you know, if we look at that million, right, to create a million dollar team, it doesn't matter if I don't have that belief and I came along and attempted to tell you that story of why that's not going to work for me or why my market's different and my price point and this is what's happening at different. There's no way you're going to buy my story because you have evidence and have experienced and created a different story. And so, you know, back to the value of anchoring coaching, like the value of having an incredible coach is they're not going to buy your crap about all of the limits that you see or all the reasons why it won't work or why you're in analysis paralysis, because they're not going to buy that story. And people that succeed at the highest levels surround themselves with people that aren't going to buy stories that are below what's possible for them. Oh, by the way, anything's possible. And so, um, Verl, what I want to champion you on is being an advocate for helping other people get what it is that they want not in one area of their lives, but in really designing a life that encompasses all aspects of succeeding and winning at a high level and leading by example and creating an incredible family and culture and community for people that be a part of that really want to get something done and get something done different than they've ever been able to do before. And I couldn't think of a better community um, that's both competent and caring to align with and the Workman Success Systems family. So Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your contribution today. There's live links that are in the chat that everyone can grab before we log off here today. And uh, make it a great rest of your day, everyone. We'll see you soon. And uh, back on the first, uh, first and third Fridays of the month, we are here and we've got an incredible lineup this year of different people that we'll be hearing from. So looking forward to seeing, seeing more of those faces here to join us. Everyone make it a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Casey. Have a great weekend.